reflect my mood right now, I think that's It could potentially play all of Spotify, but we've restricted it to about 300 songs just so it's songs that people recognise. A lot of Spotify is quite a lot of nonsense, so... Yeah, yes. <laughs> to work out your emotion, all that this radio has to go on are the pixels on an image that it takes with a little camera that's hidden behind one of those holes there. It's essentially a grid of numbers, which are quite difficult to get meaning out of. But there are a few different tricks that it can use. So, for instance, the bridge of your nose is likely to be a lot brighter than either side. Just the way that the light will hit it. Your cheeks are going to be a lot brighter than your eyes are, and so on and so on as you zoom in further and further on different bits of your face. Now, if you look in the image for these different areas of contrast, you can start to pick out different facial features like the corners of your mouth or the positions of your eyebrows. And once you have those, you can look at the angle that they're making in connection with each other to give you clues as to what emotion somebody has at that moment. It's a little bit <gasps> Damn it, it can, see, it can see inside my soul. <laughs> yeah, no, that is, you're right. That's kind of medium level happy right there. It's mellow, Chill. happy. happy. We thought, what would AI look like if we designed it? thinking about human characteristics. And the personas we came up with were the buddy, butler, and police. So the buddy, we're thinking that might be able to inspire you or try to lift you up with happier options, like a friend would. So like the world's best mix CD from a great friend that knows you really well. If you had a radio in the car where it could see you and it could see, it could sense you were getting tired and it could start playing really upbeat music, it could prevent car accidents, it could definitely have practical applications like that. One area we see the emotional radio functioning in in quite an interesting way is with um, health and well-being. So what would it look like if you used artificial intelligence and music for self-care and well-being and you could start to try to take control of your mood, you could have something that learned what made you feel better, what made you feel worse, and you could really easily manage that. There are things where it gets it wrong. I've got a bit of a mono brow, so it always thinks I'm quite angry. If you've got a beard, it always makes you a little bit happier than you normally are. Eric has got some cheeks going on there, some dimples there, which will always yeah. accentuate her smile. We all need to look exactly the same for it to be perfect. The tricks that go into these algorithms are definitely not flawless. Actually, they can end up getting it quite wrong. So Google's image recognition software recently misidentified some people's faces as gorillas, as dogs, and as seals, offending quite a few different cultures and continents along the way. And a lot of people are shocked when it doesn't play music that they like. Even though we explained to them this is going to play music depending on your emotions, they think it's going to play music depending on who they are. We've only seen the emotional radio used when other people are watching the person using it. So there's this performative aspect where you're not really guessing people's authentic emotions. You make an extreme happy face or an extreme sad face. And now it's something where maybe we just set an inspiration and it goes from there. So moving away from choice, what's that going to look like in the future? Whether you like it or not, we are increasingly being monitored and manipulated by automatic algorithms. And even though artificial intelligence might not be that intelligent yet, it does mean that we're now emotionally connecting with machines in a way that we've never done before.